All right, here we go. Let's wrap up the chapter. Last section right here. Going to take a look at proportional equations. Don't freak out. It's an introduction. Intro to proportional equations. Those equations I have listed right there are way more intense than what we're going to do. We're going to do a quick intro. Don't freak out. You don't have to make a face like Mr. Bruss freaking out. Let's get into it and let's start this thing off with quick refresh of everything we've been doing. So we started off with a Pac-Man problem. You're probably tired of seeing it, but let's watch it one more time. How fast is Pac-Man going? There it is. So he's going 18 feet per second. We turned that into a table. We turned that into a graph. So what are we doing today? Get that out of here. We're going to make it an equation. So let's knock this bad boy out. So if I give you some kind of verbal, we made it into a unit rate. We want to know, hey, what happens? How, how fast is he going per second? So you probably remember this answer. We've done it each section. Uh, 18 feet and 6 seconds is what? It's 3 feet per second. So we need that unit rate, uh, or sometimes we call it the constant of proportionality. He's always going, Pac-Man's always going 3 feet per second. Awesome. Then we took that info and like, let's fill in a table. So if he starts at 0 feet in the air, after 1 second, how far will he be? Well, he'll be 3 feet because he's going 3 feet per second. How about in 2 feet? He'll be 3 more feet, so he'll be at 6. You could keep the pattern going to 10, right? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or, what's the shortcut here? If I just want to go here, you just say 10 times 3. So 10 times 3 is going to give you 30 feet. Awesome. What if I give you the other direction? What if I give you the distance and say, hey, can you tell me the time? Go backwards. Sure. When's that going to happen? It's going to happen at 8. How did I know that? We divided. So we've been playing with that idea. Everything looks good. Remember, these are your x values. These are your y values. Uh, we turned that into a graph. So if you want to plot all these points, 0, 0 is right here. Here's Pac-Man. Starting right there. At 1, he is at 3. At 2, he is at 6. At 10, not on my graph. But it would be if I kept going. Is 8 on my graph? It looks like 8 is. 8 is at 24. Nope, it's not on my graph either. So all these points, what? Remember, if it's a nice proportional, they make this nice straight line here. And this line really goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever awesome so there it is right there we've got this nice graph it's proportional it goes to the origin of the straight line we've got this table so the last thing we're doing is just wrapping it up with the equation so we'll do all the parts but the equation is the nicest part really don't freak out so what is an equation well we want to relate x to y we want to say how do time and distance relate how can i go from one to the other how do i go from here to here well, you're just saying what? We're just saying we multiply. So all you do is take your x value, times it by 3. So instead of this x, I'm going to use a dot. So what is 2 times 3? It's 6. What is 1 times 3? It's 3. What is 0 times 3? It's 0. What is 8 times 3? It's 24. So if I give you anything over here, uh, if I give you 9, how do you find this one over here? You just times it by 3. It's 27. So all we're doing is taking the x value. If we want to find y, we say it's going to be the x value times 3 or 3 times the x value. Now notice I don't I use a dot here. So I know in the past maybe you use for multiplication you can say hey I can use a dot, I can use the time sign or I can use parentheses. These all mean multiply. But it would be soup don't write this down. It'd be super weird if you said oh yeah, it's 3 times x. Is that not weird? It looks like x and x. That's not good. So we're not going to use the x anymore. If you've been using that, whoosh, it's gone. We're going to use this dot. We're going to use parentheses. If you like the parentheses better, I'm totally down with saying something like y equals 3 times x. It's the same thing. These are same z's, 3 times x. Awesome. So that is the whole thing we're doing. All we're really doing, can we make that generic, uh, just a general term? All I got to do, what is this 3? Why is this 3 so important? Well, 3 is the k value. So really we're saying it's y equals k times x. That is the equation. Jot that down. Put a big fat box around it. We need that. We're going to use that equation. Y equals kx. So you find k, you put it in there. You'll notice a lot of times we kind of get lazy and we just don't even write that dot. We'll say y equals kx. Totally cool. You don't need the dot. It's assumed that when these are touching, it means multiply. So this up here, I could have actually wrote it as y equals 3x. These are all the same thing. They're all cool. They're all good to go. Holy cow. I went really fast, but I was thinking it was a nice review kind of uh, wrap up. Let's see what this looks like. 
So don't freak out. If it says write the equation, we need to find k. So the first thing is find k. Remember, k is your y value over your x value. So we're just going to find k like we normally do. So what is 10 over 2? Is it the same thing? These are proportional as 40 over 8. It's the same thing as 35 over 7. It's the same thing as this. So this great way to wrap up the chapter here, man. I love it. It's a nice review. These are all 5, so I know it's proportional. So there's my k. k is 5. So all you have to do, that's what we thats what we did in chapter uh, in the second section. What do we got to do now? We're going to write as an equation. We're going to say it's y equals 5 times x or y equals 5x. That's it. That is the equation because all these, if you times them by 5, 2 times 5, 8 times 5, so see how they give you that? That's the equation. It's just another way of writing this, actually. It's, it's really just this kind of rewritten, which we'll look at later. This is just the intro. So again, if I give you a graph, find k, no problem. It's my y over my x, so it's going to be 2 over 8. I'm going to reduce that to 1 over 4, if you simplify that. And then that's my k, so what's my equation? It's going to be 1 fourth times x. Whoopsh, there it is right there. Super, super cool. I'm cruising. I feel like I'm going uh, fast here. Let's let's keep it going. What if it's the verbal? So the verbal, Batman catches five villains every three days. So you could say the unit rate is what? Five villains every three days. We usually like to keep time on the bottom. So what is the K? It's just five over three. So it's going to be Y equals five over three times X. This one's kind of tricky. Totally cool. This is great. You could, and most people would write this equation. You could have, though, said, hey, every three days, I catch five villains. And again, that's legit. We just have to be careful what, what is your X and Y. So it would have been totally okay to actually say three-fifths X. So that is okay. We're not going to mark it wrong. It just depends what does X stand for and what does Y stand for. So, okay, so how do we clarify and make sure we're cool on this? Well, really, we're going to start using different letters than X and Y. And don't freak out. I'm going to keep this nice and chill for you. But just think about this for a second. What does Y really stand for in this problem? Well, if I look up here, what is K? Remember, this is K. K is Y over X. So Y is actually your villain. So what we do sometimes, instead of saying Y, we say V. That is like your Y. We say it's for villains. We just label it. The K, we know, is 5 over 3. And it's times every x. Well, remember x is on bottom. That's your days. You could say t for time or d for days. So sometimes we'll do something like this. Your villains equals 5 thirds times your days. So don't stress out again. I'm going to just have you do some matching or kind of match them up with these. This is what I'm totally down with for you right on your own, just using x and y. But that's, how, that's why we do it is we stay away from issues like this because technically this one would be your days already determined by 3 fifths villains is what would happen with that one. So we're just kind of labeling it. But again, that's that's kind of borderline next level. So we're going to toy with it. Here's what I'm expecting you to be able to do when you see these different letter, letters. So again, this is really the equation y equals k times x. That's the generic equation. But instead of saying y, I'm going to say p. What does p stand for? Well, Mr. Sullivan is making protein shakes. So there's, there's the p right there. The equation rates the amount of scoops of protein powder for the number of glasses made. So there's the g right there. What's up, g? Boom, there it is right there. So don't freak out. This is sometimes people miss it and like this is the best question in the whole thing. Find a constant proportionality. What is that? It's just K. So where's K? There it is right there. I can see it. It's four. So that don't miss that. That is a gimme question. Boom, it's just four. That's the unit rate. Uh oh. What does it mean? Now this is trickier. What does it mean? Well, when I, I add me this, I want you to label it. Four days, four apples, four oranges, four miles, four what? Well, He's going to do what? He's going to do four scoops of protein, four scoops of protein powder every what? Per glass or every glass. So every glass is going to have uh, four things of protein into it. So once we know what K is, we're just labeling it. Remember, K is the same thing as Y over X. So I know I'm going to say Y value, which is protein, over the G value, which is the glass. So uh, I'm just changing it from X and Y to protein and glasses. Boom, that is it. So I went really fast. Uh, try the practice. I hope that goes well. Good luck on the match check. Good luck on the test. Peace out.